What's going on, Future DDS family? We're here with another installment of the DSC series. Today, we have Richard Shen from Harvard School of Dental Medicine joining us. Richard, thanks for taking some time Hi, out guys. to with us, man. How you doing? Pretty good. How are you? Doing well, doing well, man. So if you could just, uh, you know, reintroduce yourself one more time and tell everybody a little bit about yourself, like where you're from, uh, when you went to undergrad, what you majored in, and if you took any time off, what you did uh, during your time off. Yeah, sure. So I'm a current D2 at Harvard School of Dental Medicine. Um, I'm actually from the Boston area, um, about 30 minute drive south of Boston. Okay. Um, I did my undergrad at NYU, uh, which was a good time in New York City for about four years. <laughs> um, majored in biology. Um, I would say I wasn't necessarily too interested in biology, but it was just the easiest path to fulfill requirements and uh, you know check off some boxes. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't take a year off, but I actually graduated a semester early. Okay. It wasn't something I really planned for, per se. Um, like going into college, I didn't know that I wanted to graduate a semester early. But I ended up just having enough credits to do so. So I just ended up doing it, saved some money. Um, so it kind of felt like I had a gap year in a way. Mm -hmm. I had like eight, nine months before dental school started. Nice. Um, so if anyone is able to do that, I definitely encourage people to do it. Um, and I just spent my time assisting a little bit in a dental office for a couple of months, but then generally spent the time just traveling and uh, hanging out. Enjoying a little downtown before, before that flood of dental school. Yeah, <laughs> it was much needed. <laughs> true, true, true. So, you know, the, the one burning question I know a lot of students have uh, is questions about the DAT. So if you could just think back a little bit and tell uh, what were your top tips well, uh, like your one number one tip or, you know, as well as any resources that you used while you were preparing for the DAT in order to, you know, get the score you got. Yeah, so I used the DAT bootcamp uh, website. I thought it was really great. I spent the summer between sophomore and junior year of college uh, studying for it. And they had this 10-week study schedule on their website, and I just followed that basically exactly. Um, and then it ended up working out pretty well. Um, I would say in terms of a tip, my number one tip would just be to not take any shortcuts in your studying. Um, I've heard that, you know, I've had friends who maybe spend less time on QR since it seems easier or less on reading comp, or maybe try to skip some gen chem or o chem sections because they've already studied it before in college. But I think because it is a standardized test, um, you have so many questions that repeat themselves. So I think it's really important to just go over them yeah. uh, consistently um, to make sure you can pick up these easy questions and points and really maximize your score. Gosh, gosh, gotcha. So, um, you know, going from there, uh, obviously, you know, a lot of schools or a lot of students out here that are applying to school have a preference of school that they, you know, the schools that they're looking for. So, um, you know, does Harvard in particular have any, type of feeder programs, whether it's like a master's program or summer programs or any type of, you know, just dental enrichment programs throughout the year, like an impressions day or a pre-dental day, anything like that? Yeah, so our ASDA chapter actually has a pre-dental committee that does some events throughout the year. Um, we have two main events. Um, the first one being a pre-dental mini conference, oh, nice. which is short, sort of like an impressions pre-dental day, except it's just uh, short into three hours on a Friday afternoon. And the main benefit the students get out of that is that they're able to talk to current students, they're able to hear from admissions and have a whole talk from them. And we also bring in a keynote speaker who's usually just one of our professors. They talk about their journey to dentistry and it's usually always a really inspiring story. Nice. And then of course at the end we have like a student panel where people can ask any questions that they want. Um, then usually in the spring, we host something called the Introduction to Dentistry course. And this is something that occurs every two weeks, usually on a Tuesday night from like 5.30 to 7.30. Mm -hmm. And current students here at Harvard will essentially teach a class uh, to pre-dental students who signed up for the course. Nice. And this class is essentially just uh, going over the different fields of dentistry, for example, like what oral surgery is, what endo is, stuff like that, and just sort of sparking students' interests in uh, 
in dentistry. And I think as a pre-dental student, from what I remember, it was always great just being around dental students yeah. in the dental school, you know, it's just like kind of keeping that goal um, in your mind. Yeah, I think that would be good too, to have that experience just so you can start building that network. You know, a lot of the people that you're, you're seeing on the pre-dental path, you're going to be seeing for the next at least four or five years, you know, going through. Yeah, exactly. And whatnot. So that seems, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, you know, after you, you know, you figured out what schools you want to apply to, uh, do you remember exactly how many schools you, you decided to apply to? I think I ended up applying to 10 schools. Okay. 10 schools, yeah. 10 schools, but you ended up settling on Harvard. Yeah. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. So I guess if you could, you know, just take us through the process of, um, you know, actually interviewing at Harvard and kind of how the experience was and obviously, you know, why you ultimately chose uh, Harvard. Sure. So actually, I would first start with this. Uh, my first interview is actually at UConn and I really like the school and it was probably my best interview because it was my first one. So I was like super prepared for it. Yeah. And Harvard was actually my last interview by like two months. So I kind of interviewed with them. I think early February, which was sort of on the later side. And, you know, I was rusty. I didn't really, you know, <laughs> had to like refresh all, my whole application. Um, so I didn't go as well, but it was, you know, ended up being okay. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the main points for why I ended up choosing Harvard um, was the small class size, the pass fail, um the med school year our first year nice. um and i think having gone through most of my second year now like those things that were advertised were definitely um i can definitely see the benefit of those now as a student okay which is really cool and just a t uh i guess a small tip for people who do end up interviewing mm -hmm. at basically any school um, I had the attitude going into all these interviews, like if I got an interview at the school, then I know they'll want to accept me yeah. because I, f I feel like having interviewed other people for certain things, like you kind of ignore all the stats and resume stuff during the interview and you're just trying to get to know the, uh, the, the person, you know, mm -hmm. and how they would fit into your organization or school or whatever. So I think just having the attitude that you you belong there just makes you more relaxed and more confident during the interviews i think that really helps you stand out among the other candidates nice so uh how was the the actual i guess the course of the interview when you, you show up to campus at what eight o'clock uh then you go through a, what a tour like could you walk me through the day yeah I I remember this, it's been a little yeah while. correctly uh, i think we had started the day with like you know a quick introduction and a few presentations we had one on diversity, uh, had one on um, financial aid, and just a general uh, presentation on curriculum. And we had two interviews uh, each. Um, so my first one was with a uh, alumni of the school. Right. Um, so it was, it was pretty cool hearing uh, like her perspective and then where she ended up now. And then my second interview was with the Dean of Dental Education, Dr. Sang Park. Okay. Um, so I was able to ask her questions about the school's curriculum because it's pretty unique and she was able to ask me questions about myself. So overall, it was a pretty relaxing interview day. It was probably one of my most relaxed interviews. Okay. And there was actually only one other person interviewing with me that day. So it was very easy going. Yeah, cool. It seems like you had a personal day. Are they usually, like, the groups, interview groups usually that small, or is that just a special day for you guys? Uh, yeah, they're usually under six people. Okay. Usually, like, four-ish, I would say, is the average. That's solid. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, you spoke a little bit about, you know, asking questions about the curriculum and getting the feel for that. Um, how was it that first year? Can you tell a little bit about, you know, your experience just going through first year? And then speak a little bit more about the how the curriculum is laid out and getting into clinic. Yeah, so our first year is essentially exclusively in Harvard Medical School, mm -hmm. um, which is, you know, a great opportunity for us dental students to have, having this uh, medical background. Um, 
but for me it was it was pretty difficult um i like just you know i knew this going in but you know you're not going over dentistry at all your first year here um and on top of that you're studying alongside some of like the brightest student minds in the country which was kind of intimidating for me at times um i knew all of this going in but i just didn't realize how challenging it would be so it was a pretty difficult year um but having gone through it i'm really glad that i did because i thought i grew as a student a lot and i grew as a person a lot uh trying to overcome all those challenges so overall i thought it was a really good year I would say my experience with that first year was not really the norm. Um, I think most of my classmates had a better time. Um, <laughs> I don't know why, but they enjoyed it a little more. Okay. Um, then our, our second year is basically six months of didactics again, but this time more dental focused. Um, and there's a, a pretty strong emphasis on oral medicine and oral pathology. Um, I think it's because of our connection to like the Brigham, mm -hmm. uh, which has a big oral med, oral path department. Um, and then we're kind of at this point now uh, where we have our March break and we take boards at the beginning of that and have a whole month off for research and whatever. Gotcha. And then um, from now until basically June or July, we're in the preclinic a lot, uh, getting ready to see our first patients in June or July, which is a pretty short time compared to other schools. But I think they do a good job of um, really compacting the curriculum mm -hmm. um, so that we don't have that much waste of time and everything that we may do in the preclinic the week before, we are able to do on patients like the next week or the next month gotcha. um so i think the, the the clinical curriculum is very compact and efficient in that way and then third year is just more clinic and a few didactics here and there mm -hmm. um and then our fourth year is sort of divided up into three sections i believe uh you have like rotations for a bit um, you're in-house uh, in the Harvard teaching practice for a bit. Then I think the most important thing is our externship time, which is about three months. And that's really where you, you know, you're the dentist in the community yeah. health center and you really pick up your hand skills there. So it's something I'm looking forward to. Nice. So you guys have a three month externship. Okay. That's, that's yeah. Cool. Okay, cool. So, um, you know, just kind of down the back, given a, a more, I guess, personal feel of Harvard itself, what is something that you feel like is unique about uh, your school, you know, about your experience? I mean, granted, you, I know you only have your one, one perspective, you know, being a student yeah. there, but uh, what is something you feel like is very unique about your experience? Yeah, I guess, um, I guess it was, I guess, sort of why people choose to come here. Um, I think it's like the med school first year, people really like um, the small class size, and the pass fail uh, grading. Um, and I think with this small class size, I think that was the most important thing for me mm -hmm. um, because I wanted that professor attention and engagement with the students. For some students, maybe it's not the, the best thing. And even for me, sometimes I'm just like, you know, <laughs> tired of someone looking over my shoulder in a way. <laughs> but I think, you know, in the end, it's always like the the best way to get an education and to form those relationships with your professors. Um, I actually recently started an aesthetic society here at Harvard. Nice. And when I proposed the idea, I immediately had a professor who was interested and he immediately brought on two other professors to help uh, like run our study club nice. in a way. And over this break, we're doing virtual meetings and they're really proactive. And I think just this small, tight-knit community is really powerful for me. Cool, cool, cool. So just to wrap up here, we've got one more question for you. Yeah. Um, and that is going to be, uh, you know, just thinking back to that, that younger version of you that was applying to dental school, fighting to get into dental school. What is some advice, you know, your current self, what is some advice that you would tell younger version of you? Who are some of you, you know, uh, just, you know, I don't know whether it's a gym, whether it's, calm down, whatever it is, like, what, what is some words of advice that you would give? Yeah, so I think there are two main things that I would tell myself. One is to apply earlier. 
Okay. Um, my I had that's crucial. Completed. I had I completed my application probably in May or June. Um, but my app wasn't complete until like late July, early August. Mm -hmm. And the main reason for that being was that I forgot to request an official transcript for my undergrad. Mm -hmm. So that like those things just take time, like three right. or four weeks. So you're just <laughs> sitting there waiting on them. And those are easy things to get like early. You can do those before you even start your application. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely recommend applying early, like everybody says. And then the second thing was to just not stress too much. I think after submitting to after submitting my application to submitting my deposit for school, it was like a really stressful time because you're pretty uncertain of your future. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it is just waiting around. Um, and just looking back at it, you know, all that stress, it doesn't really uh, add value or add you know, is productive in any way. So I would just recommend to all applicants to just kind of take it easy and trust that things will work themselves out in the end. Nice, 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 man. Well, as we see, it definitely has worked out for you. Uh, you know, congrats yeah. on being in Harvard and making <laughs> Thank it you. into your second year now. But, uh, you know, if anybody has any questions for you about Harvard in particular, or maybe more about your journey, getting into Harvard, you know, your dental school journey so far, what's the best way that they can, you know, reach out to you? Um, I think uh, I think Instagram would be the best way. Okay. Um, my handle is at uh, Richard Shen with an extra R before the Richard. Okay. Um, so if anyone would want to shoot me a DM over there, I'd be more than happy to chat. Nice, nice, nice. So, man, thank you. Uh, you know, again for taking some time out and speaking with us, yeah, man. Thank you. you. Some, some great information, some great gems. So I'm sure everybody out there looking at, looking at Harvard for a potential school, man. Yeah, I definitely encourage everyone to apply. Um, I mean, I my average stats were not what Harvard's average stats was, but I, you know, I just took, you know, the chance and applied because it doesn't really hurt too much. And I definitely encourage everyone else to do the same. Man, appreciate that. Thanks again, man. Um, yeah, you know, you. again, best of luck. And for everyone else out there, if you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button and notification bell as well as the like button. Um, you know, you want to make sure you're, you're getting notified whenever we're putting up new content. The series is, uh, you know, definitely in full effect. We're doing all the schools across America. Um, so if you have any questions for us, head over to Instagram, follow us at underscore future DDS, send us a DM there. We'll be able to send you, you know, answer any questions you might have or comments you might have as soon as possible. But, uh, I think that's going to be it, man. Richard, again, thanks, man. Best of, luck, best of luck through all these times, these weird times we're in right now. Yeah, of course. Thank you. You too. All right. Now, see you later. See ya.